Happy Friday, celebrating the weekend with week four of NFL football, and week five of college football. Welcome into Let's Bet It. We had Thursday night football last night to get us all warmed up. Lauren Jabara <laughs> here with Jared Smith here to break it all down. Jared, how are you feeling? It is Friday, Friday, Woo! gotta get down on Friday. A little Carly Rae Jepsen for a morning. Yeah, no, I, I I don't think my morning really can start properly until I get either a dance or a song or a song <laughs> and a dance combined together. Um, last night was fun. The Thursday night games have been fun, and maybe they won't be fun all season when the you know the wear and tear starts to you know build up on these guys. But I I, I thought Joe Burrow really showed himself, in, especially in the second half, to be the guy. Uh, Trevor mm -hmm. Lawrence didn't play bad either. I, I thought the Jags played, you know, well enough to win, but didn't make the plays in the second half. And how about the quarterback touchdown props? Trevor Lawrence gets home. Last week it was Sam Darnold. Two weeks ago you spiked one with Daniel Jones. That is the mood of the Thursday night games. QB touchdowns. And granted, I think it's been the mood all year for a lot of these guys, uh, but those are certainly some fun props to keep an eye on this season. I love, I love quarterback props. It's like honestly one of my favorite things to bet. So – We'll look at that heading into this weekend. Slate of things to talk about today. We got college football week five. Andrew Ortenberg's going to be on. Andrew O, back on the hey show. Yo. NFL week four. He's going to give us his picks, break down some of his favorite games to watch this weekend. And Jared, you know, we can't end with the picks wise play of the day. I'm excited to hear yours mm. because we got a little side bet. We do. Going, but Our first side bet. Our first, first of many bet. side bets. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't even wait. Lots to get to. So little time. So without further ado, let's bet it. First of all, getting into college football tomorrow, going to be a big day. A lot of really awesome games to keep our eye on. Who are you looking at and, and what value do you like here in these different games? Yeah, so, you know, we do our early birds. Um, and I would say the early birds have been fun so far this year. But the best, this is the, one of the better early birds um, that I've gotten so far. And I don't know if, is a Chanticleer a bird? Right, it is, right? It's like a rooster. So we're gonna cock a doodle do all the way to this pick. Can you can, can you can you crow for me? Cock a doodle do. Oh, I was Postal. going. <laughs> oh wow, that's yeah, that's really impressive. I, I don't have that kind of vocal range. Oh, my um, light just went out. Hey, we're doing it. We're doing it. Just roll with it. Just roll with it. The this pick is so good, it knocked out LJ's lights. So Coastal Carolina opened minus 32 and a half this week. We sent out an article on pixwise.com on on Tuesday morning, Monday night. And we told people, hey, I think this line's going to move. Get on Coastal now. Well, I wake up here on Friday, and it's 35. It moved a full two and a half points. Cock -a -doo -doo -doo. We love Coastal Carolina this weekend. They're facing ULM at home. And, man, oh, man, ULM, I, I think the Warhawks are the worst team in college football. So they are dead last in yards per play, which is not what you want. And they're 110. <laughs> It's, it's not good. 130th out of 130 teams in yards per play. And they're also 110th in opponent yards per play. So they're not moving it, and they're giving up a ton of yards. Coastal, meanwhile, Coastal's been revving the engines. They just dropped the 50-burger on UMass last week, and I put UMass and ULM kind of in the same category. So I think Coastal, I would still play it at 35. I, I think Coastal's going to drop the hammer uh, on ULM on Saturday. So that's our first play. That's our best early bird of the week that worked out very nicely for us. Um, our next play, sometimes just like handicapping ULM, it's easier to handicap the lesser teams in college football sometimes than it is the good teams. And I think that this game it features two of those teams, Florida State and Syracuse. So explain this to me, Lauren. Syracuse beats Liberty last week. Okay. Nice win. Okay. They beat Hugh Freeze's team, who's you know shown themselves to be pretty decent at times, maybe a little down this year. Florida State's been awful. One of seven teams that are still winless in the FBS. Yet. That's crazy. That yeah, actually, I actually, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That's wild. So all of those things are happening. Florida State looks terrible. Syracuse coming off a nice win. Florida State's favored in this game by four and a half. And the line is moving in the Knowles' favor. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense, right? That no. makes you go, hmm, the books are trying to bait you. Get that Syracuse action. Uh, no, we're not going to fall for that. We're not taking the Knolls. <laughs> Lee Corso, not so fast. We're taking the Knolls, laying four and a half this week. They're going to get their first win against Syracuse. We talked to one of the Superbook employees, one of the guys who makes the trades out there in Vegas. He said that Syracuse is the worst team in the ACC, power rating-wise. And Florida State's actually a little undervalued in this game. They should be laying maybe a touchdown 
and you're getting it under a touchdown. So we like the Knowles this week. And I, I haven't done this yet this year, but our final play uh, of the week is a two-unit play, and I am very, very confident. And unfortunately, Ooh. you're not going to like it um, because I, I, I think your Wolverines are going are, are gonna to be now. in for a – they're going to be in for a tough challenge this week against Wisconsin. We, we talked about this yesterday with Alex Glaze. Listen, Wisconsin lost by 28 last week. Michigan's looked okay. They, Wait, they, first they beat of all, Rutgers. just for Alex, who did, who did Wisconsin lose to? <laughs> Notre Dame! The Fighting Irish. We'll get to your Irish in a minute. Slow down. Slow down. We'll get to your Irish in just a minute there, Slugger. But I, I think Wisconsin, to me, this is the perfect spot to buy in. So they're at home. They're laying less than a field goal. And – Michigan is a running team. So they beat Rutgers by seven over the weekend, last weekend. They only ran for 120 yards in that game, or excuse me, 112 yards in that game. And it was a seven-point cushion. The prior games, they ran for 335 against Western, 343 against Washington, 373 against NIU. Those are rushing totals, not total yards. You're not running it on Wisconsin. They lead the nation. Fewest yards per rush this season – and that defense is not going to let you run on them. So that means Cade McNamara has to win them the game. And I don't trust Cade McNamara to go to Badgerville and get a win in Madison when all the fans are jumping around like crazy. Wisconsin was 7-0 at home in 2019. <laughs> I see you grabbing something. What are you grabbing? Are you grabbing Nothing. Michigan I'm swag? I'm falling off my chair. I'm like, well, all these sound really. She's so, really she is Michigan. so blown away by my handicap. She's falling off her chair. Short yeah. number at home. Wisconsin's backs are against the wall after last week. The number's telling you to bet Wisconsin, and I just don't see Michigan moving it. So those are our three picks this week. The early bird, Coastal Carolina, the Chanticleers, cock a doodle doo against Woo. ULM. And then we're going to, I don't know, I'm crazy for betting the Knowles land points, but I'm going to do it. And I I, I got to fade your Wolverines and take the Badgers. Yeah, I know. Honestly, Jared, I'm I'm kind of with you on this one. I don't want to be. I might be betting with my heart. I honestly haven't decided on that game yet. I'll probably <laughs> bet with my heart and go with Michigan just because you can't probably. root against your alma mater, right? But at the same time, I mean, I mean, the stats are the stats. So we'll Numbers see. We'll lie. see what happens come tomorrow. You're not fading your Wolverines. And There's we've got a side bet on this game coming up later in the show. I know. Story. Yeah. Just buckle up and wait for it. Another <laughs> thing to buckle up for this Ole Miss Alabama game, because I feel like with this one, a lot of people are going to take Ole Miss with the points. But I feel like the over is the way to play this game. I mean, both of these teams, phenomenal offenses. They're known to run up the score. You look at the score last year, it was 63 48. So the over right now, or the the over right now, I'm saying over 77 and a half. I feel like that's the way to definitely bet this game. Florida at Kentucky. I like this one, but I'm taking Kentucky plus eight and a half. Changing my pick from earlier in the week. Earlier in the week, I thought that Florida was going to cover the spread. Oh, a flip-flop. Well, it a was the early bird. Flip-flop. It was like, hey, what are we thinking about earlier in the week? But this is actually what I'm going to bet this week. Okay. The more I think about it, so the Gators have really owned – this SEC series, I mean, but they lost to Kentucky, and they've lost to Kentucky, I think, only once since 1986. And they've wow. also only lost once in Lexington. But I think the Gators are a different team on the road. Kentucky's 4 0. They want to stay in the SEC race. And the next three weeks are basically their playoffs. They got Florida, they got LSU, they got Georgia. Ooh. Florida's going to be playing their first game outside of the state of Florida this season. I like and- that. I mean, at the same time, Kentucky won in 2019 at home. It showed Florida can no longer chalk up a win at Lexington. So I think I think Florida is going to squeak out a win in this one. But I think that, you know, Kentucky plus eight and a half. I'm feeling pretty good about that one. Mm. And then Arkansas at Georgia. Jared, I know you're on this one, too. I've been on my Woo Pig Suey train Love it. for the last few weeks. Arkansas is getting 18 and a half points. They're getting no respect, no respect. Respect. Let me Rodney tell Dangerfield. You. I know. I respect around here. Yeah, thank you. I got a great nugget for you on this game when you're done, too. Really? Oh, good. really? I know. The Bulldogs are three and one across against the spread this season and have allowed just 23 points. The Razorbacks, four and zero against the spread, and that includes two covers as an underdog. So I feel really good about Arkansas. They've been on their game. They've been playing well and getting 18 and a half points. I feel like it's a no brainer for me. Give me your nugget. Yeah, I love nuggets on a Friday morning. There's nothing better. We want nuggets for breakfast. Friday morning right. nug. <laughs> Kirby Smart, really good coach. Mm-hmm. Not great when he's expected to win by a lot at home. In his career at Georgia, 12 and 17 against the number as a home favorite. 
Oh, wow. So, again, Georgia's a team that plays well. They win games, but they don't always exceed the total, you know, the spread, you know, because their, their offense is a little limited. And, and, and I could see why that trend has a little bit of staying power in his, I think, three or four seasons at uh, Georgia. So uh, yeah. that, to me, is an interesting one. Um, because the number's so big. It's a that's a big, big whopper number. 18 and a half. Wow. Big, big whopper. Big whopper. Whoppers and nuggets. I'm getting Burger King for lunch. I'm right starving now. right now. <laughs> that's what I'm doing right after shooting the show. I'm gonna go get some food. That sounds great. And then I have one more I want to just throw in there. And this is especially for Alex. I haven't worked with him this week. You guys have been together on the show. You guys have been avoiding each other strategically. I, I think uh Jack's trying to, you know, separate you two, keep you in opposite corners. I know. Hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> but obviously, I'm betting Notre Dame. Obviously. Plus three and a half against Cincy. Irish, they just, they're not getting any love. I should have used the no respect line on this game. No respect. I'll tell you. <laughs> no respect. Rodney Dangerfield. I mean, they're playing at home. Touchdown, Jesus, baby. Looking Ooh. over them. The Fighting Irish, they've had a wild, wild start to the season. And <sighs> I feel like they cashed in on their luck to escape Florida State. I will say that. And Toledo, which wasn't necessarily the best performance by them, but then they beat two Big Ten opponents, including crushing Wisconsin last week in the stadium series at Soldier Field. I just think they need to play their best game of the season to beat Cincy, but I think Saturday is going to be their chance to make a huge statement and be like, yeah, we actually deserve a spot in the college football playoff, right? Because people right now, including Alex, are saying, hey, Notre Dame, are they really that good? Are they really that good? Yeah, they went into the fourth quarter 10-10 against Wisconsin. But you saw what happened in the fourth quarter, right? Like they really took a stronghold of that game. So I think that since he's going to get a good performance out of their quarterback, and I think the game's going to be tight, but I feel like Notre Dame under Brian Kelly, they just have a way of pulling out those wins in those close coin flip games. And I feel like that's exactly what's going to happen. Notre Dame plus one and a half. Go fighting Irish. Let's go. I'm with you. I, you like I, I grabbed two and a half earlier this week on points bet. Um, and the lines moved down since. I, I love trying to find those spots where I think the, I'm gonna mm. like the lines like hit rock bottom. And I'll say this: if you guys are out there watching the show, thinking who's this Lauren girl giving out these college football picks, she went three and one on underdog underdog money lines last week, and she's up like a gajillion units. She's a unit queen, so don't fade these picks. Just enjoy the moment that you're getting this knowledge right dropped out, on you right by out. the great Lauren Jabara. <laughs> Just enjoy it. And if it, they lose next week, then you can you can scream at her and yell at her and Alex can talk all the smack he wants. But for now, she's sitting on top of the world in the PixWise uh, LBI standings. Look at that. She's got the swag. She's ready to go. The fight in Irish. They're at home in South Bend facing a team that they should beat. You know, it's kind of funny. I was looking at the schedules here. This is like the last ranked team both of these teams are going to face. So this is like That's the Super true. Bowl for both. And yeah. – this is like the last chance both teams get to show the committee that, hey, listen, we, we belong in the F, uh, CFP. So uh, I think this is going to be a fun game. I'm really, really looking forward to it. A lot of good games tomorrow, but it is time to get into Sunday and Monday as we welcome in Pixy Own Andrew Ortenberg. Andrew O, back on the show. He was with us last Friday. We had a good weekend. We did. Let's bring him on in. On with us last Friday, absolutely rocked his football picks. We're bringing him back this week, bright and early. You're on the West Coast, the left coast. How you feeling? It's like 7 a.m. your time, isn't it? I'm feeling good. Yeah, I appreciate this because it's something I would never do on my own. So I'm actually really grateful for this because I want to be up this early. I would just never do it if I didn't have to be. So I'm very grateful for this commitment to get me up. Yeah. Yes. I'm very excited I'm really for after this to, to be like, oh, I'm up. Yeah, we're trying to help you kickstart your day, get your picks in early, and uh, maybe just have the best Friday ever. I don't know. We'll see. You're gonna. I feel like it's gonna be noon your time. You're gonna look around and be like, "Oh my god, I got a lot done today." And you're like, "Wait, it's only noon." I feel like that when nope, I wake up exactly, early. Exactly. Exactly. I'm gonna like work out at like eight thirty in the morning. Like gonna get. So, I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. Very Who productive. Is he? I love it. I love it. All right, let's get into NFL picks because I'm looking at the list over here, Ao, and you have the Giants this week to actually win a game oh my gosh my light is so like concerned about the the giants are actually winning light her up by it the lights have light her up today. no and anytime there's watching. a good pick the light flickers so this is a good this is a good sign for yeah. Giants. Yeah. i was I gonna say if that's not a bad omen i don't know what is but yes 
I am going with the Giants plus seven. <laughs> let, let me just start off by saying I would never point this out. I'm far too humble and modest. Many people were saying, though, they were flooding my inbox saying, wow, you went 4-0 and on the picks you gave last week on the Let's Bet It show. Just Drag wanted to get away. that out of the way. I just wanted to acknowledge it. For this, but I just want to say. <laughs> I'm not like, guaranteeing that I'm going to go 0-4 this week, but I That's... just had to say it. it's fine. I'll still be 4-4 four four, even if I go 0-4. <laughs> so, it's a good way to look at it. It's a positive way to look at it. <laughs> So I'm going with the Giants plus seven. Last week, I took on the show the Falcons plus three. I was like, hey, there's no way the Giants should be a three-point favorite over anybody. So got to take the Gi Falcons. Falcons came through. And now this week, I'm going to the Giants. I just feel like seven is far too much. It was seven and a half earlier. I wish I got that. But I feel like mm -hmm. seven is far too much to be laying with Jameis Winston. If you're looking to lay seven points, you're thinking, okay, I've got to have some offensive upside here. Jameis Winston hasn't passed for more than 148 yards in any of his three games. He's doing virtually nothing. I don't see how he could lay more than seven. I liked the matchup a lot last week with the uh, when the Saints were playing the Patriots because we thought, okay, the Saints' run defense was going to shut down everything the Patriots wanted to do, get them to stop hiding Mac Jones. Well, the Giants don't run the ball anyways. The Giants can't run the ball on anybody, so this isn't really as bad of a matchup for them. The Giants receiver inj injuries mm, worry me a little bit. But remember what happened the last time the Saints were a big favorite coming off a, a win. They were trounced by the Panthers as a three-and-a-half point favorite. I think we could see a similar upset here. And when it's a pro I like the money line, too. I just think this is a high-variance wow. game. I think mm -hmm. that – I mean, getting three-to-one with the Giants, I just feel like this is a high-variance game. Wouldn't it surprise me if the Giants got blown out? Wouldn't it surprise me at all if they won this one relatively easily? James Winston hasn't had to do anything. I still think this Giants defense is pretty solid. 0-3, must-win game. We're going to get yeah. the best effort here. Uh, I think that they're keep this within a touchdown for sure. You you are not on the Jameis Winston train. I like it. I like it. I like Jameis. Like, I li like Jameis on a personal level. As a player, <laughs> it, this is business. A personal man. friend of mine, as Stephen A. Smith would say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love Jameis Winston. Uh, I also like Washington as my second pick. Speaking of the Falcons. They came through for us last week, picking against them this week. I mean, they weren't very – they got the cover. I had the under in the giants Falcons game too. Grateful for them for taking care of business. They didn't look very good doing it. I mean, they won 17-14. to 14. It's crazy. I thought this Falcons offense had the potential to be pretty decent coming into the year. They hired Arthur Smith. I was a fan yeah. of him when he did in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. They drafted Kyle Pitts, obviously, still have Calvin Ridley. And they haven't just been bad. They've been really, really bad. They have like the least efficient offense in the NFL, according to DVOA right now. Not getting anything going. Washington, sure, they got beat up by the Bills, but that was on the road in Buffalo. I just think the Bills are a really, really good team. Can't blame them too much. I all things considered, Taylor Heineke going on the road into Bills Mafia actually looked pretty good. Washington's defense obviously has been a big disappointment, but I think this should be the game for them to get going. If there was ever going to be a game where Chase Young, that defensive line, Montez Sweat, yeah. Jonathan Allen, Jerron Payne get going, it would be against this Atlanta offensive mm -hmm. line. We saw Atlanta's O-line get tossed around the first two weeks by the Eagles when we when they had to face a defensive front with some life and the Bucks the next week. I think it could be a similar story here. And I think getting this game almost virtually a pick them. I like Washington a lot. Mm. I like Interesting that. Interesting spot. I'll be honest. I don't know if I can lay on the road with Washington, oh. but your handicap it's is fair. spot on. Your it's handicap fair. is spot on. Um, and I, I like this under a lot, too, that you're giving out in the Seahawks-Niners game because of the key total being 51, and it's over that. And yeah. These teams play weird games. What are you seeing there in San Francisco this week? Yeah, they do play weird games. That's kind of why I like it. I mean, again, I, I want to be the most solid handicap to just be like, I kind of feel like these two teams are going to play. But that is kind of part of it. There's sure. obviously a lot else. But mm -hmm. I think the fact that this game being such a must win, essentially, for both teams yeah. in NFC West to try and keep pace with the Rams and Cardinals. I mean, the Rams and Cardinals are both 3-0. and They play this week. One of them is going to be 4-0 and after this week. Whoever loses this game. If the Seahawks lose this game, they're 1-3. and They're all of a sudden way behind in the division. Yeah. If the 49ers lose, they're 2-2 two and two and have back-to-back -back losses. So this game is going to be extremely hard fought. Sounds like a cliche. But I think that helps the under, potentially. And then, just matchup-wise, I'm really not a fan of Jimmy G. He had his best game of the season in the second half against the Packers. He still averaged like 6.3 yards per attempt for the game. Lost a disastrous fumble. Did a lot of stupid stuff. Yeah. The Packers' pass rush all of a sudden got going against the 49ers. The Packers' pass rush hadn't gotten after anybody. Zedaria Smith's been hurt. They were getting after Jimmy G. Looks like this 49ers O-line is not that great. Seahawks. They've been killing it in the first half. They've been making no adjustments then and getting absolutely smoked in the second yeah. half of games. Their new yeah. offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, it looks like he's coming out with a great script, but they're not making any adjustments to what the defense is doing. The Seahawks have scored zero points in the third quarter this year. So wow. I really just think with this I, being I, a division really? game. 
That yeah. is a stat right there. And then exactly, and then the 49ers, I think, are going to want to run the ball a lot. You know, Seattle's deep run, run, run defense is taking a bit of a step back. Kyle Shanahan is wide zone scheme, going to keep it on the ground, keep the clock moving. Fifty two is a lot for a division game. So. It is, yeah, that's, that's what crazy. I was thinking too. Al. Yeah, fifty two is a lot. For a divisional game, and you, the urgency, I think, in Seattle it will be evident. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, again, it's a weird That's way right. to say it, but these two teams do tend to play games that are a little more close to the vest because they're going to play each other again later this year, and the divisional vibes give give off a little, hey, we're going to run the ball, keep the clock, control the tempo. Um, it's funny that you're on a total this week. I don't play totals a whole lot. This is only the fourth total that I've played this year. But this Browns-Vikings game, to me, on Sunday, screams over. So the Vikings defense is dreadful. They're giving up almost seven yards per play. The Browns defense, I was looking at the DVOA numbers this week, 19th against the pass in DVOA. I know they faced the Chiefs week one, but then they played the Bears and the Texans. So that's kind of surprising that their numbers are so low. I don't know if one game against the Chiefs is going to skew those DVA numbers so much. But, man, those are bad numbers against uh, two really bad offenses over the last couple weeks. And Minnesota, say what you want about the Vikings and Kirk Cousins. He's the fourth highest passer uh, rating-wise in the NFL this year. Uh, Fast track, U.S. Bank Stadium, indoor games so far this year have trended over. So the 51 being that key number for me, I got it at 51 this week. I like the over. I'll give you one more total because I guess it's total total Friday here on the show. Our boy Wilsh, uh, who's – Awesome editor works, uh, uh, you know, for here picks wise. Uh, he's on the under in this Panthers Cowboys game, fifty two and a hook. Um, and I love this Panthers defense. I'm curious, Ao, if you think any of these totals are worth, you know, worth the crap this week. I think that Panthers Cowboys one, if you get that number over fifty two, that's a good under spot. And I just, I feel like there's going to be points in that Browns Vikings game. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I'm like the opposite, Bo. I've been betting almost exclusively totals and like very few okay. spreads so far this yeah. year. I've been not really like loving the board in terms of spreads, but I've been sending on a ton of totals. I had the under last night. I survived by the skin of my Ooh. teeth in the Thursday night oh game. I had, I had 45 and a half and got wow. 45. I mean, 45 Hooked. is key. The old yeah. hook. It is, it is. 45 is key. No doubt about it. Yeah, I agree with Wilsh on the Cowboys, Panthers under. I think that uh, I'm a little worried with the injuries the Panthers have on defense now. J.C. Yeah. Horn obviously is hurt. but I think just traded for C.J. Henderson. So I, you, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how week? to look weak. It's everything one. in the first week, I don't think. It, it's tough, yeah. but at least they have another first-round pick. For sure, at least they're making moves. I mean, I like their defensive coordinator, Phil Snow, a lot. And, like, I think that their pass rush can get pressure here. The Cowboys' yeah. whole line hasn't played very well. They're obviously no. still dealing with the suspension. Mm-hmm. So I like it. You know what's funny is I'm actually on the other side of that Vikings Browns total. I took it when it opened like 52 and a half. We could potentially yeah. middle this. I took we 52 could. and a half. I tweeted it out a few days ago. We could middle this. And so I'm, I'll root for the to follow 51 or 52. I well, don't feel we'll to see. be honest. I don't feel great about it. I wish I could kind of take it back. I mean the line really? moved a tiny bit in my favor. But yeah, these Vi- the Vikings now have well, to just bet over 51 and a half this morning. No, I better. might. One, maybe we can the Vikings, get a yeah, Their secondary is why already not? the reason why I did it was because I thought that okay, I thought the Browns defense was just improving from the first couple of weeks. I thought that they looked pretty bad against the Texans, but mm-hmm. I was like, okay, the Texans were looking really good with Tyrod there. I was thinking maybe that was just the Texans being better than yeah. expected. And then this past week, finally, Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett, granted they were playing the Bears, got going. They combined for six and a half sacks. And I was like, uh-huh. I just thought 52 and a half was decent. I mean, but the Vikings defense has been terrible. I've been rooting for the Vikings all year, have their win total. So the Browns are going to move the ball in this game. I, I, I'm, sure. I'm fairly convinced that that, which in my eyes accelerates the aggressiveness of Kirk Cousins, who's looked again, he's looked really Kirk's good. Kirk looks great. I love Kirk. Really I'm a Baker look. hater. I'm a Baker doubter, but I, I love Kirk. You get a little Baker vibes to you, too. We talked about Ashley yeah. Kutcher. I see a little Baker vibes there. What do you think, LJ? Mm-hmm. A little Baker Mayfield vibes there if he shaves his head a little bit? No, no, no. I'm, I'm crazy there. I think that's a swing and a miss for you, Jared Smith. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right. I'm getting into my picks because I'm ready to go. All right. So just moved from Denver, and I hate betting against the Denver Broncos. Well, your arms are tired. I just flew in from Denver. <laughs> but, but I am. So I have, I'm, I'm looking at the Baltimore Ravens-Denver Broncos game. I like the Ravens laying one because – I know the Broncos are off to a 3-0 start, and I know I was talking a little bit about this on Tuesday too. But all of their wins were against bottom feeder teams. The teams that they have played, the Jags, Jets, sorry, Jared again, and the Giants, they combined for 0-9 for their first three games of the season. I mean, they're playing again for the first pick of the 2022 draft. So the Ravens are a playoff team. I know they're coming off of a huge win against the Chiefs, 
And the Broncos do deserve a ton of credit. Teddy Bridgewater has been playing really well. But at the same time, the Ravens, I mean, they're they're a team that's going to be in the playoffs. And, yeah, they got by from the skin of their back. I don't, is that the saying? The skin, got by teeth. on the skin, skin of their teeth. teeth. What? Skin of their teeth. That's the same. You know, I mean, skin, skin of their back sounds a little. I guess that. I get people. Have I skin actually hated that. Sure. I keep on going. Let's go like, with it. Oh, that's Let's not with right. It. That's Let's not go with right. It. <laughs> so the Ravens got by against the Lions with a 66 yard field goal. 66 yard field goal. 66 yard field goal. Say again. I triggered you earlier this week with that. I can't believe you brought it up yourself. <laughs> I just, I don't, I, that was. That was a brutal game, but hey, we're getting past it. Week four, I'm I'm feeling better this week, so we'll see. But I just think the Ravens laying one. I feel good about them in this game. And then, guys, I know I do a Jabarley every week, and the last couple Jabarleys I've done have the Eagles in them. I don't <sighs> think I'm ever betting the Eagles again in my entire life. No, don't say that. Don't say that. Never say never. Until, until next week, just wait. <laughs> but as as of right now, this is how I'm feeling. I'm very dramatic, very hot and cold, very black and white. There's like no gray area in the middle. It's like either one or the other. So I'm never betting the Eagles again. I get those vibes from you. But I have my first ever same game Jabarlay. Panthers and Cowboys. The Cowboys laying four and a half and CD Lamb over 70 and a half receiving yards valued at 264. Let's get it. The Sam Darnold bounce back season been incredible, but the Cowboys are just a bad matchup for the injured Panthers team. I mean, you guys touched on it a little bit. And I just think, you know, CJ Henderson, that trade, it just won't fix things in the first week of him being on the team. And I know Carolina's defense is good, but if you want to beat it, you need a good offensive line and a plethora of pass catchers. Hello, Dallas. I'm feeling good about this one. And CD Lamb, over 70 and a half receiving yards. And then the last one, ooh. Does AO, do you like the same game Jabarle? Jack wants to know, our producer. I like any same game Jabarle. I just like saying it. I was going to say, I would defer to Jack, our producer on this. But from a marketing perspective, the Jabarle must be working. like it, totally Because agree. it imprinted in my brain. Because I saw last week, I was like following the scores. I saw the Bengals one. And the first thing that my mind thought of when the, the, I see the Bengals win, I was like, oh, the Jabarle. Like, the first leg of the Jabarle cash. I was like, so it was fresh in my mind. It must be doing well. It must be a good title. Good I think, marketing. And I, I think like Posner thing. came up with it, our fearless leader, right? I, I, I think, or, or maybe Jack did. Who, who came up with this genius idea? It, it's up. catchy. It, either whoever did, it's catchy. Yeah. If it was DP, you know, congrats. That's why they pay him the big bucks. If it was, yeah. <laughs> See, Jack is smart. Give the credit to the boss. That's 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 how you get a race later. Later for next the win. Day. <laughs> My Jabarle hasn't necessarily been for the win the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this week is a new it's week. It's all about the marketing. It's all about the marketing, <laughs> Lauren. About it? So this is the first ever same game, Jabarle. So Love we'll see it. what happens. Fingers crossed for this one. I also like the Chiefs at the Eagles. I'm telling you, I'm never betting the Eagles again. I'm betting the Chiefs. <laughs> I, I got them at five and a half, laying five and a half. Now I think it's a good, that's a good price. Seven. Um, and But I know they haven't looked like the two-time reigning AFC champs. But they've had a tough schedule. Browns, Ravens, Chargers. Browns and Ravens, yeah. both playoff teams this year. Chargers look much better with Brandon Staley leading the pack. And obviously, I'm a big fan of Justin Herbert in his second season. And the Eagles, to me, just have been inconsistent. They had a dominant win in ATL, which I loved. I won a lot of money on that game. But the offense showed nothing against the 49ers. And it's a defense that gave up 30 points against the Packers. So they're on a short week. Not an optimal spot to be in to play against a guy like Andy Reid. Chiefs are one and two. They have a heightened sense of urgency. And I think this is a yeah. spot to kind of buy low. I mean, now it's at minus seven. At least when I got it, it was minus five and a half. Um, I just, I feel good about the Chiefs in this one, laying five and a half or laying seven. I still so, feel good about, I feel good about them laying seven too. I mean, I feel like they're desperate, they're urgent, and they're going to come out and absolutely roll over the Eagles in this one. You must have been reading our chat because Jack wants to know if you would take the Chiefs at seven. I teased the Chiefs down to one. Um, I, I, Kansas City has not lost three games in a row since 2017. And if they lost this week, that it would be their third straight loss. So was that, it, wasn't the, wasn't the first loss for the Kansas City Chiefs this season, like Patrick Mahomes first ever regular season loss or something like that? No, no, no. He's lost games in the regular season. His first before. September. Or, yeah, or there you go. Yes, I think yes, was, yes, I knew yes, there was something, there yes, was something there. Which 100%. Is crazy. His first September loss. Yeah. Um, and I, when you so there's a couple things about this Chiefs game. I this Eagles defense, they made Dak Prescott look really good on Monday. I, I just 
to me, when you get Mahomes coming in, you know, a very pissed off Patrick Mahomes and company, I, I they're going to have to get into a shootout with KC to win this game, and I just don't see Jalen Hurts being able to match blow for blow. Yeah. Now, if the Philly defense can keep Kansas City at wraps, maybe if Miles Sanders has a big game and they can control tempo and win this game like 27-24, but if the Chiefs get the 30, forget it. I, I just don't see Philly being able to score that much. Even though the Chiefs defense has been really bad this year, which is it's one of those things, though. Also, like turnovers were a killer for the Chiefs last week, right? Like if you oh three in the first half on drive, like that doesn't happen. happen. It's like they they beat themselves in that game, in my opinion. And so I feel like if you clean it up, you take care of your own game. Yeah, I agree. Again, (laughs) the this is the third time the lights gone out today, guys. I'm telling you, I'm telling. Well, it was on my coastal pick. It was on a. Win all of these three picks where the lights went out. I'm gonna just like start knocking it over. For picks that we're feeling good about. I think it's going to be the opposite, guys. Maybe I'm a pessimist. Uh, I'm superstitious. Go back to sleep, man. It does not know, give me good vibes. It gives me bad vibes. I don't like that. Come on I'm now. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. We're getting into our play of the days because we can't end, especially on a Friday, without giving a three-star play of the day for the weekend and then talking a little bit about our play of the days. And we'll see what the lamp of the gods wants the, to the, say the about our gods. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. All right, play of the day. Jared, give us a three-star play for the weekend because Um, we make some money. Yeah, actually, both of these are tonight. Uh, MLB tonight. Listen, I know it's college football, NFL, all that stuff's great, but there's still big, very important baseball games happening this weekend. Um, This game's really not important, but our guy, I got to give a shout-out to our guy, Keith Schmelter, one of the MLB cappers uh, on PicksWise.com. He is 26-1, and 20 wins, six losses, one draw, in his 27 MLB three-star That's plays. That's wild. That's like the Cardinals going seven um, on a 17-0 run. That's it actually is. wild. And he's got a bet tonight that I would have never even looked at this game because it's involving a team, two teams that are out of the playoff race. And I won't give away the handicap. Go to PicksWise.com. Read it for yourself because it's really good insight. Phillies, Marlins, under seven. It's about mm-hmm. an even money bet. Uh, plus 100 I saw on DraftKings this morning. So get on that. And then our guy Slop. What would it be? It would not be a Friday without a sloppy prop. Um, Josh Rogers, the pitcher for the Washington Nationals, at home tonight facing the Red Sox. Red Sox need this game, but they have been looking really bad. They just dropped two or three at Camden Yards. Over three and a half strikeouts for Sloppy John on Josh Rogers tonight. Those are the MLB picks-wise uh, plays of the day. I like that. I like to call it the slot prop. All about. I mean, we actually have no plops today, plus money props. But we had one last night money. with Trevor Lawrence, baby. Oh, Get my God. You Get love the home. plops, baby. Love the plops. All right. Your play of the day or play of the weekend, I guess, because I want to hear what it is. Yeah. yeah that, well, first of all, that's – oh, wait, sorry. Are we talking to Jared? Andrew, you, uh, go I, ahead. No, no. no. I'm, just, I'm just tossing it up. We no, have a side really bet know. on this no, game. No, 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 no. I, no, I have a going. side bet on this game. with, with I, I want to build the suspense more with Lauren. So you give yeah. out your play first, and then I will you know, start butting heads with my co-host here. I on know my what play. it is, right. so I'm just going to – if you're gonna twist my arm, if you insist, um, go ahead. I, this one is weird because I feel like I've had a pretty good sense of the market this year. I, I feel like I can usually tell, okay, if this line is gonna not last, if this is gonna move my direction. I kind of thought this one was gonna drop. It hasn't. I like the under in the Bucks Pats game. It's actually gone up from 49 to 49 and a half. I like the under 49 and a half a lot. I just feel like that's really, really high for a game involving Mac Jones, considering he can't do anything right now. We talked last week about why I like the Saints a lot in that Saints-Pats game, because I was thinking, okay, what do the Pats want to do the first couple of weeks? They've really been trying to run the ball with Damian Harris, hide Mac Jones as much as possible. He had the lowest average depth of target of any quarterback in week two. And what happens last week? They go out, they play the Saints. They can't run because the Saints have an elite run defense and the offense does nothing. Mac Jones throws three interceptions. He averages 5.3 yards per attempt. The team finishes with only 13 points. And who do they happen to play this week? The team with probably the only better run defense in the Saints yeah. in the entire league in the Buccaneers, who literally teams have even stopped even trying to run on them because it's just impossible with Vita Vey and Dominican Sue up there in the East. middle. So the Patriots aren't going to be able to run. And it's like, yeah, maybe that would lead to a little bit faster of a game. But we saw what happened last week when they couldn't run. The offense can't do anything. I don't think the Pats are going to hold up their end of the bargain here. Like, again, the Bucks secondary has looked a little bit vulnerable, sure. But that's because they've played Dak Prescott, Matt Ryan, and Matthew Stafford, three extremely seasoned veteran quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, Todd Bowles, he likes to send a lot of exotic blitzes, the Bucks defensive coordinator. I think that kind of stuff is much more likely to rattle a rookie quarterback making his fourth career start, making his first start in prime time 
this is a big stage for Mac Jones by far. Really? I mean, the first few weeks yeah. have been kind of sleepy compared to re, sleepy compared to the biggest yeah. game of the NFL season here, the most highly anticipated showdown, Absolutely. Sunday night football, all eyes on this game. 49 just seems high. The Bucks. I mean, look, I'm not saying Bill Belichick is going to shut down Tom Brady or anything like that. If anybody were to be able to come up with a defensive game plan to at least slow him down, I think it would be Belichick. And with Mac Jones not expecting much from him, 50 or 49 and a half just seems way too odd. Yeah. I love this pick. I um, because nobody wants to bet the under in this game, just like nobody wants to bet the Pats in this game. Um, yeah. and I think the fact that the Bucks have looked so good offensively and a little bit shaky in the back defensively, and it's – this total is under 50, which in the NFL is, you know, a pretty modest total these days. Uh, I think that's pretty telling. So I, I certainly – it's again, it's not a sexy pick because unders never are, but sometimes that's where the oh, best value is. All right. Um, we've been teasing this pick all show. I kind of gave this out earlier, but now we're going to up the ante because I think the one thing our show is missing so far, as awesome as it is, is a little side action between myself and the co-host. Okay. So, Lauren <laughs> – I, I know you love your Wolverines, and I know you've got probably a million pieces of swag that you'd love to see me wear on the air because I'm such a Penn State homer. So if Wisconsin loses this game, again, we gave out the cap. I won't go too crazy into the handicap because we gave, you know, scroll back to the beginning Wisconsin of the show. Wisconsin loses or if Michigan wins? There's two ways to say that, Joe. <laughs> okay? Fair. If that team above the state of Ohio wins, um, <laughs> they don't, if, if the mitten, if the Mitten wins or if Wisconsin loses, I will on Monday, I will let you, maybe not Monday because we might have some shipping things to, to yeah. deal with over the weekend, but at some point in the next week or so, I'll let you pick the day and I'll let you pick the swag. You can send me the Amazon link. I will buy it and I will wear a piece of Michigan swag on the air if okay. Wisconsin does not get across the finish line against your Wolverines on Saturday. That's how confident I am. The Penn State man himself is willing to wear Michigan maize and blue on a television program if the Badgers come up short this Saturday. All I got to say to know. this, go blue, baby, because you're about to lose. You're about to wear a Michigan crop top. Are you ready for it? <laughs> oh, Are you ready for it? I don't know. Thank if God we only go from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be just like a nice little crop top oh right here i love it <laughs> we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens come Monday. order an xl I'm moving, please at least i'm moving from denver right now so all my stuff is in boxes i'm sending you an amazon link and you can <laughs> yes and you can i'll i'll I'm going to do some snoop. But here's the question. Do I get some kind of, you know, challenge, you know, some kind of, you know, forfeit if, if Michigan loses? Yeah, there's got to be a wear, flip side to this. Do bet. you have to wear oh, yeah. Wisconsin gear? Or no, actually, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I'd love to see you wear one of those, like, Nittany Lion hats with, like, the ears. And, and I, I think that okay, would I'll be do that. adorable. I'll do that. I'll do that. That would be adorable. I'll Our viewers that. would love that. I'll do that. I'll wear. I will buy it for you too, and you can keep it in your house or in your apartment. You can always think of how awesome the Nittany Lions are every time you look at it. Oh my God! I know. I mean, I'll keep that in a drawer in the bottom of the drawer, <laughs> far back, stuffed in with all like the random paperwork and stuff that you don't ever uh, go through. So. Right, but right, no, right, right. I don't know if I ever mentioned it, Jared, but uh, my dad went to Penn State, so I actually am a Penn State guy too. I grew up; that was my right. college team, and always has been. You're so outnumbered on this show, here, Lauren. Yeah. What are you going to do? I bet you're next move. We are. The entire time. We are, baby. Hey, it's okay. I can hold my own over here. Go blue, baby. I'm ready for it. All right. My play of the day. Pittsburgh Steelers at Green Bay Packers. Packers laying six and a half. You look at the Steelers. They've been under a ton of scrutiny because of right now all of their struggles. And Ben Roethlisberger is less than stellar from a physical standpoint. I feel like the older he gets, the worse he's getting. The only guy that gets better with age is Tom Brady for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know how. But honestly, with Ben Roethlisberger, it shouldn't be a shock just given how many throws he's attempted over the last few years, his age, and just generally watching the Pittsburgh Steelers over the last season and a half or so. And even if he could throw down the field, I just don't think the Steelers can protect him long enough to give him the looks that he wants to be successful, right? And Green Bay's defense just might not be as good as it was in the first half against the 49ers. So I don't know. I just, I feel really good this game about the Packers laying six and a half. You saw how good they've looked the last couple of weeks, obviously not week one, but at the same time, I'm just, that's my play of the day. I feel good about it. I'm usually not betting a favorite. I'm usually betting yeah. the underdog, but at the same time, 
I'm going with it. Someone's FaceTiming me right now on my computer. And I had like two of my faces, like one on this screen and like one on the FaceTime screen. I'm like, oh God, that's a lot of Lauren. That is a lot of Lauren on one computer screen. Holy <laughs> so I don't know they if that's an old computer the light. I don't know. There's a it's lot of weird, weird things days. Happening. Maybe that's good for a Friday. You know, Fridays are supposed to be a little quirky, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I know. And it's and it's the first day of October, you know? That's right. It is the first day of October. Oh no, as as our producer Jack would say, it's the first day of October. Tobes. First day of Tobes. I love it. I love it. What do you guys think about what do you guys think about the Packers? I I would have teased the Packers for sure. I don't know if I'd lay it because of their defense. But if I were going to pick a side in this game, I can't back Pittsburgh. Their offensive numbers are dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. They're averaging almost, I want to say less than five yards per play, but like yeah. in the mid fours, which is just not good. And defensively, again, I, I know their defense is supposed to be good, but I haven't seen that finishing kick. And I'm throwing out week one because think about how many week one performances have been so not what we've seen week two and three. Yeah. So the week one game against the Bills, I mean, how good have the Bills looked since week one? So I, I don't know how, how much I put in, oh, the Steelers defense is really good because they shut down the Bills week one, you know, mindset. I, I would put more what I've seen the last two weeks, the game against Cincinnati, they were absolutely lifeless. And Cincinnati gave up some yards last night to Jacksonville, yeah. but Pittsburgh could not uh, answer that uh, last Sunday. So I, I would certainly lean to the Packers in that spot. Remember what I said about week three, right? You got the crazy you got the normal week three. It balances out. We see what teams are actually made of. I feel like week three is the biggest indicator of what teams are about this season. And so I'm rolling with it. I'm rolling with it. Packers laying six and a half. Guys, it has been so fun working with you today. Friday, Friday. Got to get down on Friday. That is it for us. Find us on the Pixwise YouTube channel. Go to Pixwise.com. Follow us on Twitter. Jared S. Alex O. Lauren J. Andrew. 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 <laughs> Football frenzy. Cannot even wait. We'll see you Monday to break it all down. Let's get it. Let's bet it. That was a horrible win. Let's bet it. <laughs>